Hello everyone, my name is Eric Jones, better known as the Turf Teacher. Welcome to Pesticide Emergency Spills and Fires. This information comes directly from Chapter 10 in your North Carolina Pesticide Applicator Certification Core Manuals. Now, let's get started with our course objectives, and they are, we are going to know what to do in case of a wet or dry pesticide spill. We're gonna understand the action that we need to take in case of a pesticide fire. And then we're gonna know how to clean up after a pesticide fire or accident. Guys, all of these are major events that may or may not happen to you during your pesticide career or your horticulture career. So you need to pay close attention to this. We're talking about people's lives. We're talking about damage to uh, the environment, damage to people's properties very serious stuff here so let's get started with the course so a pesticide spill the three c's of spill management we have control we're going to control the spill if it happens we're going to actually try to stop it if we can then we're going to contain it keep it in a certain area we're going to create buffer zones or we're going to hold it in that area and then last but not least we're going to clean up the spill and so pay close attention to that in your textbook. All of that starts uh, on page 144 and 145, and then on into um, uh, page 146, where it's talking about cleaning up the spill, guys. So remember, the three C's, control, contain, and clean up. So with control and contain, if the container is small, we've got a small pesticide container, put it in a large container, or I like keeping some of those Tupperware boxes or whatever that uh, usually people pack up stuff in. Something like that's good. You've got a spill in a two and a half gallon jug or a one gallon jug, you can grab it, stick it in that, and it's gonna contain that spill in that tub-like uh, structure. That is a plastic structure. You can get it in any big box store, but it's good to have one of those uh, on your trucks. and if you're storing your pesticides on the truck you could actually store it in one of those tup tupperware containers or get one of the larger um, more sturdier boxes that would hold it but i love those plastic rubbermaid type boxes because they can contain the um an, a leaky bottle that you may have if the container is large put on the ppe and then try to plug the leak so make sure you've got that ppe readily available that needs to be like in its own let's say zippered uh, bag, like a gym bag, that you can grab it real quick, throw your stuff on, and get to the, uh, the, where the spill's happening. And then do everything you can to keep the leak from spreading and don't let it contaminate any waterways. Do your best to keep that. Guys, we need that emergency spill kit on the truck. And, and with the stuff that we can carry on our vehicles, we should do a pretty good job of uh, maintaining those three C's during a uh, pesticide mishap. So. If the spill is a liquid, pour an absorbent material uh, over it to stop and you know, to stop the spread. We can use stuff like sand, vermiculite, clay, but pet litter. K kitty litter is the best stuff to have. Keep a bag of that in your truck. You can put it out. You can sweep it up, clean it up. It's the best way to do it. Do not use sawdust because some of these pesticides could catch fire with that. They are combustible, and so when you add the product like wood or sawdust, it could generate a spark. If the spill is a powder, lightly mist it with water. Don't soak it though, or you can cover it with a tarp to keep the dust particles from you know, floating away uh, in a drift uh, situation. So uh, the blue tarps that we get at the big box stores are good to keep. Uh, anything like a sheet, uh, real inexpensive. You can keep it folded up neat and tight or actually keep it in its packaging that it comes. It'll slide right behind the truck seat or underneath the truck and you've got that good um, bedding sheet that could be used uh, in a situation like this and it doesn't take up much room. Cleanup. Someone needs to be at the spill site until it is all cleaned up or at least that the danger is removed. You need to keep an employee there, you need to keep the technician and possibly the person that actually caused the accident would be good to stay there because police are going to come, the fire uh, department's going to come, you need to have um, someone there and hopefully it's your, your pesticide applicant. Hopefully they weren't injured in like a car accident that they had to be immediately uh, evacuated because they're gonna know the pesticides right offhand what's in there. But that's why it's good to keep that three ring binder notebook in your truck. You know, the personnel that show up first on site, they can see, oh, well, this, this individual was applying this chemical. Have all that stuff ready available in the, uh, the cab of the truck. If the chemical uh, 
have spilled indoors, get outside. You don't want to stay inside and, and breathe in those fumes. You're in that tight, compacted area. Uh, you have more of a chance of breathing that stuff in. If safe, when the pesticide is not a fumigant or odorless, then set up a fan and open doors in the windows to kind of get it cleaned out. But I would still make sure I had the proper PPE on before I go into the home and actually uh, start cleaning it up. After the cleanup, decontaminate all your PPE and dispose of anything that can't be safely clean. I like the disposable stuff. If you've heard in the previous lectures, get those disposable Tyvek suits. Just throw them away, dispose of them properly. Don't worry about having to clean them, get rid of them. And of course, wash yourself thoroughly after a cleanup of a pesticide spill. And again, you wanna wash it separately in hot water twice, then rinse the washing machine, especially if you're doing it at home. But again, try to have a facility on site uh, at your, um, at your um, landscape company or your turf care um, company, have a laundry facility there in the bathroom so your technicians um, can, can wash them and actually take a shower before they go home because none of us want any of our employees or ourselves taking that pest, pesticide residue home when it can be taken care of at the shop. Uh, small spill cleanup or decontamination, use 30% bleach to 70% water ratio solution. That's 4.8 cups per gallon of water, or you can use hydrated lime, or you can have a commercial uh, decontamination preparation. And that gets maybe a little more involved. And there are like hazmat teams that could come out and take care of a spill like that. Do not use bleach and lime together. You will create the toxic chlorine gas, which is uh, just as deadly as uh, some of the pesticides that we may come across. Here is an emergency spill kit. You know, the guys have their PPE on. They got their rubber uh, uh, covers over their boots. They've got their gloves. They've... Um, got their hard hats on, they've got their goggles on, and they are cleaning up a pesticide spill there. And see, here they have the spill kit. It's got that ring, as you can see, right here. It's like a, almost like a cotton foam inside that, but that'll help contain the spill if it's there. And then you've got, looks like maybe um, uh, the blue gloves or whatever there, and then there looks like a sheet back there in case if it's a dry spill, that they can lay that over it. And guys, this needs to be on every truck uh, or every vehicle that is performing pesticide applications. Uh, with your kit, always keep a spill kit anywhere the pesticides are stored, mixed, or loaded. Definitely there. You need one everywhere you go. And the kit should include the following emergency phone numbers. You know, and most of the time that's going to be 911, but hey, you may have a, uh, uh, you need your poison control center. You may have, um, you know, a different number for the fire department, maybe even a different phone number for the sheriff department if it's not a true 911 emergency. You know, you've had a, you know, small pesticide spill that's just a little bit out there. You still need to notify somebody, but you may not need to call 911. But have all those emergency phone numbers that needs to be in the three ring binder. Have your PPE, uh, your coveralls, gloves, footwear, apron, eyewear, and a respirator. Uh, containment tubes, what we saw that was sticking out of that red bucket on the previous slide, and those pads to lay over top, absorbent material like the, the cat litter, uh, and a sweeping compound so you could pour over it and actually sweep up uh, as much of the uh, pesticide when the absorbent material um, collects it and absorbs it into itself. A shovel and a broom and a dustpan to sweep up that compound that we've just created, a detergent, fire extingu extinguisher, and sturdy. Uh, plastic container for waste uh, and probably just like a good five gallon bucket that's got a lid on it um, that we can put that pesticide residue and strip down our PPE if we're using disposable PE, PPE, another one to, uh, to put all that in so we can dispose of it properly. Plan for emergencies, guys. Maintain an inventory with the product names. We need to know everything that we have in our storage facility and everything that we have in our vehicles. We need to know the container volumes and the container locations in the storage facility, especially if you have a larger facility. If you're a huge um, turf grass company that's, you know, that's all you do is apply pesticides and fertilizer, you're gonna have a big warehouse full of this stuff. Or you could be a dealer. You need to know exactly where each pesticide is in case the fire department or rescue personnel get there. They, they know where the most dangerous stuff is. Store off-site copies of the labels, MSDS forms, and the description of necessary PPE for all pesticides in your storage site. So hopefully your office is separate than your storage facility. 
Hopefully you got multiple buildings, but if not, it's okay. You need to have somewhere access to all that information and guys, you need to check it on a regular basis. Take, especially the volumes. Hey, we've used up some of this. We've brought some more of it in. How much do you have at all times? Don't get behind on that stuff because that's gonna help save the rescue personnel that's coming to save your facility. Uh, an, inf an emergency information outline. When reporting an emergency, be prepared to give these details. The name and number of the person reporting it, it's yourself when you're calling it in, and the exact location of the emergency. So make sure that all your employees know your exact physical address of your property. You may say that we're ABC Landscaping in Greensboro, North Carolina, but you need to tell them that, hey, we're 123 Main Street, Greensboro. When reporting an emergency, be prepared also to give this, the general description of the events, what happened, the name, quantity, and classification of the pesticides involved in the event. That's where that book's gonna come in handy. If you've got that book in your truck, you know exactly what you're putting in. And you can turn to the, to the label, you can turn to the MSDS sheet when you're talking to uh, the 911 operator. The extent of any injuries that may have happened and then a potential hazard to the environment or people. And all that information will come from your label and your MSDS sheet. So have them there uh, in your truck if, in case you have the accident. For your facility maps, make sure that you got two sketch maps. That's always helpful in emergencies. Keep them separate. Again, keep them in your office. Keep one at your storage facility and have maybe a, a backup plan at your home where you have a safe that has all of this information. Refer to page 149 in your core manual for tips on creating a sketch of the facility and immediate surroundings. Hey, and guys, the best thing now with GPS, Google Earth, and uh, your geo data that comes from your, from your county, guys, you can get a good overhead aerial map of your property, print it out, label this as your, where your storage facility is, label where you have extra copies of your MSDS sheets, if it's in your office or if it's in another shop building, that's very simple to do. They're talking about you know, drawing it and stuff like that. Guys, we have all these tools readily available for us. Print it, label it, you can download it as a JPEG and then type over it in something like Microsoft Word in big red bold letters and have it posted. And, and take a copy to your fire department. You know, all these volunteer firefighters, they risk their lives every day for us. Help these guys out. So ha why not have three sketches and go up to your fire department and give them the information and say, hey, we're, we're a lawn care company. Here's a map of our uh, pesticide storage facility. Here's typically what we're gonna keep, but guys, I'm gonna update this, you know, weekly, if not bi-weekly for you, and let you know what we have in our storage facility. Those guys would be tickled uh, pink, uh, you know, if you did that for them. And they're gonna respect you because you're taking the time and effort to come and help them. Refer to page 150 in your core manual for tips on sketching uh, a site runoff control. Now, that's probably something that you could do with geodata or Google Earth as well, but study that information and do that. And you need to know that if in case you had a pesticide spill or an accident by your storage facility, where, where is the drainage gonna go? And you need to be able to, to correct that immediately and know uh, exactly how the water flows through your property. Um, again, you need to have uh, these signs up, warn them that this is a pesticide storage area that needs to be labeled. And you also need to let them know that there's no smoking, that it's a restricted area, and only very few people within the organization should have access uh, to your storage facilities. Fires, reduce the fire hazards as much as you can. Locate the storage facility away from people and animals. You don't want to endanger them. Keep your site locked at all times and only a few people should have the combination code or the access key. Post the signage that pesticides are stored here. Keep anything flammable away from your uh, steam lines, heating systems, and keep glass or pressurized containers out of the direct sunlight. Well, all of that pesticide bottles needs to be out of the sunlight anyway in the facility. But guys, definitely don't um, have your gas cans, don't have your fuel point next to your, your pesticide storage facility. That needs to be on the opposite ends of your shop grounds. Uh, and then install a uh, fire detection system 
and then have foaming fire extinguishers. So have that fire extinguisher. If you got one of those little, you know, 10 by 10 buildings, guys, if you're a small operator, those are perfect. You've got that, it's separate. You keep a fire extinguisher in there. You've got it insulated for, for temperature control. You can add a fan, you know, um, run a wire out there, you know, a temporary pole or something, but you've got access to light. You've got access to water uh, to decontaminate yourself or to, to rinse off if you have to. Just do the right thing. Follow these procedures that we're seeing in the core manual and you're not gonna have an issue. But if you ever do have an issue, you're covered. You know exactly what to do, guys. We can never prepare enough uh, for this. So this is almost like fire drills in the elementary school. All of our students and our children, they need to know exactly what to do in the case of a fire. We need to know what to do in case of a fire with our pesticide storage facility. So responding to the fire, um, when calling 911 or the fire department, let them know that pesticides are involved. And hey, if you've already taken them a map of your property and they know, oh, ABC Landscaping just called, we know that that's, an, that's a bad situation. We know what chemicals they've got in there. They're already prepared. And you know what? They probably would even train. They would probably ask you, hey, can we come down and do like a um, training scenario on your site? Guys, that's what you want. That could save you money, that could save you your property, and it's definitely gonna help save lives, and that's what we have to do. Evacuate people and animals. Leave immediately if you suspect any poisoning through the skin, eyes, or inhalation. Wear your uh, PPE, and then uh, cool nearby containers to prevent additional fire and move vehicles away from the site. You don't want those catching on fire. Yeah, a building catches on fire, and you've got your trucks parked next to it. They're susceptible to catching on fire. Back them up, get away, and get everybody as far away as possible. Provide emergency responders with the MSDS sheets. They should already have it if you're doing the right thing. And then contain any small fires with fog, foam, or an approved powder. Avoid further contamination from water runoff by building dikes or trenches to contain the runoff. Well, most of us are also in the landscape business, so we've got a skid steer, we've got dingoes, we've got tractors uh, with front end loaders. We can help do that. And we need to practice that uh, if we're running these pesticides from, from a building like that. Uh, the cleanup, keep people away from the site due to the toxic water or the runoff. Get instructions for disposal of contaminated waste from federal or state authorities and always wear your PPE and then contact the pesticide manufacturer for further instructions. They'll be more than willing to help you when their pesticide, their product is involved uh, in an accident like that. And guys, this information comes directly from chapter 10 uh, in your core manual. I appreciate it and I'll see you in the next lecture. Thanks.